Hi, Curtis. Hi, Dad. Congrats on 500 episodes. 500 big episodes. <laughs> We're so proud of you. You built such a great community. It's amazing to see how many geeks you've brought together. Yep. One big happy family. <laughs> so, congratulations. We, we love, love you. you. <laughs> and here's to 500, 500 more. episodes. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thanks to my daughter, Lindsay, and my wife, Margita. Love you both. And hey, Disney World geeks, Curtis Stone here. I'm the Podfather host of this amazing Geekin' Family. Welcome to episode 536 of the Geekin' on Walt Disney World podcast. This week, my longtime listener, critic, and most of all, friend, the one and only Kevin Curtis Allen. Kevin joins me to review his three weeks in Florida and Disney World, and I've been having fun talking and hanging out with friends like Kevin, walking along the ocean from his Isle of Wight in the UK, and reviewing trips to Disney parks for over nine years. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. I started the podcast with my daughter, Lindsay, talking about our Disney World trips, and now we bring on our Disney geek friends to tell their trip stories, and our listeners are so positive, caring, generous, and they are experienced Disney geeks. You'll get lots of ideas and tips for your next trip to Disney World from their real-world experiences and trip reports. We do encourage a family atmosphere here on the show, and we'd love for you, too, to join our Geek and Family. You can get started by joining an amazing private discussion group in Facebook. Search for Geekin on WDW Family. You can ask questions, share your trip pictures, and just have fun with one of the best group of Disney World geeks out there on the Internet. And we're independent Disney authorized travel guides with FTC Elite Travel. We'd love to be your Disney travel guides, help you book your room, tickets, dining reservations for any of those Disney trips, even to Paris or a cruise and Disneyland too. You'll notice many of our guests on the podcast book their trips or transfer their trip bookings to the Travelin' Tierras. You can get started by emailing them at travelintierras at gmail.com. That's my wife, Margita and her good friend, Auntie Judy. Just check the show notes and you'll see their email as well as mine if you'd like to reach out to us to talk about Disney World trips or if you'd like to be a guest on the podcast. Email me, kurt.stone at geekinonww.com. This week's featured trip report is with my pal, Kevin Curtis Allen. I'm going to talk about his stay at Saratoga Springs, intermittent fasting, and he's got an impressive food listing starting with Denny's, Earl of Sandwich, Saratoga Pool Bar, Harambe Marketplace, the Plaza Ice Cream, ABC Commissary, Crepes in France. He's got a story about his crepes in France. The Bear Claw, the Contempo Cafe, Boardwalk Bakery Reuben, Space 220. Oh my gosh, Kevin, you really talk a lot about food. World Showcase with his friends, our friends, Scott and Karen Daves. From the Mickey File Podcast, Rose and Crown, DVC Lounge, Stories, Wrong Shirts, My Speech, Samantha's Potty Mouth Exposed, and Time Spent with Good Old Friends. For someone who complains to me about all the food talk, Kevin really does a great job covering food on his trip, and in typical Kevin style, he adds lots of colorful commentary. Let's now go with my pal, Kevin, the host of the Brits Guide to Disney World and that Florida podcast, and find out how the Brits go to Disney World. Well, many years ago... When I started doing the podcast, I had this guy from the UK, the Isle of Wight, as a matter of fact, messaging me, wondering if I would be interested in finding out how the people from the UK go to Disney World. And I thought that was really cool. And actually, after many, many years, we've become good pals and consider him a brother. And 
he was a big reason we did this grand geek and gathering again this past fall so please give a warm geek and family welcome to kevin curtis allen yeah and how much do you regret that Not at all. I love how we tease each other now. We're, we are like little, you're like my little brother. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a very yeah. special relationship in, in with <laughs> Thomas. I do wonder uh, when we get talking, if pe- if people wonder quite if we're being serious with each other. Yeah, I know. We both are sarcastic. Did and, you uh, appreciate <laughs> your two small chocolate bars? I haven't really identified them yet from all the confusion of the chocolate bars between you and AJ and the Halloween candy, Kevin, and the fact that I was sleeping when you dropped them off. That was the, that was actually the first night I think I got some sleep. It was, or the, the, the back story early. to it is Margie years ago said she, I can't remember if it was whole nut, Cadbury's whole nut or Cadbury's fruit and nut. Yeah. And I did ask, I think I got told it was one or the other and I couldn't remember. So we do large bars. I think they're 200 grams bars of, of both fruit and nut and, yeah. and uh, whole nut. So they went on offer at work. So I bought one of each and I thought, I well, can't very well. Mm-hmm. I knew if I had given to you, you'd probably eat them before they got to Margita anyway. So I made <laughs> sure that I wanted to actually, You know that from experience. I wanted to actually hand them to Margita, but she was asleep. I thought very well, I'd come in your room and uh, hand them to her. But yeah, that's what I really wanted to do. So I made Judy promise that she actually hand them straight to uh, Margate. If I see you managed to sneak one away up into your office the other day, so it, uh, okay, big fail. But yeah. Were, were, they, little, were they the little yellow ones? Yeah, little, little tiny yellow jump, ones that crumble a little bit? Yeah, those little jump bars <laughs> and stuff like that. Found two small jump bars, I think it was, and uh, I can't remember what the other one was. It might have been a flake or something like that, but yeah. Yeah, flake, that's what I thought. Yeah. That's what it's small called. Bar, and, a small that's bar, okay. for, considering you've got to be, uh, you're busy on this health kick at the moment. Yeah, I'm trying to lose weight. Well, I'm doing well. I'm really actually pleased. This morning I woke up, I was surprised, down a couple of pounds after I didn't think the scale was not friendly all week. It seemed like I was not making much progress, but I was excited this morning to see I was down a couple of pounds. Yeah, so it's okay, Kevin. It, you uh, you didn't know, but you were encouraging me in my weight loss adventures since I came home from Disney World. <laughs> you were helpful. Yeah. Let's, yeah. So what we're going to cover then is good. my trip yeah. when it starts from my move to Saratoga Springs. If anyone wants to hear about my flight out and my flight back and bits and pieces, like that, I've already released a podcast on that Florida podcast covering that because I had a couple of issues flying out and flying back. And then I'm going to release the five days that I stayed off site on that Florida podcast in the next month or two. If you want to hear about that, it's going to be covered there. But we'll start from when I moved to Saratoga Springs and brought all my stuff from a little, little bit of a Walgreens shop. So I, I bought me sneaker doodles. Doodles. Is that, what is that, a cupcake? No, it's like a very thin cookie. And they do them in Walgreens. Oh, okay, yeah. I bought a packet, I think last year, and they were good. So I think I went back and bought about five or six. Mm. They do an oatmeal and raisin one, and they do a plain one. But yeah, mm. I like those. Now, look, I'm not really, in, I'm not yeah. a big cookie person normally. Uh, that, that good. this is a great idea definitely check out kevin's you got two podcasts really yeah got right? you got the florida, florida podcast. podcast and i got brit's guide to disney vacation club the brit's guide is gonna i recorded last night as i said to kurt earlier before we started recording i ordered for three hours i'm gonna break that up into about three or four episodes and i'm gonna put on some audio that i recorded at the end of each episode which will be shows that i've recorded and i'm trying to make them the ones that we talked about in that episode. So I recorded Haunted Mansion, I recorded Jungle Cruise and things like that. And I'll put them on the end. So yeah. if you really want to suffer another 10 minutes after <laughs> you've, you've listened to me for nearly an hour, you can do so. I love it. This way I can keep you to 90 minutes and I can get to work on time. Re- recording. This is great. I don't think we ever did a work day recording early in the morning. A lot of times we'll record it on the weekend because we're five hours difference. But this is working out great for me. I love this. Thank you, Kevin, for coming on. And I bet you didn't talk about food at all on your recordings of four hours or so that you've done already. Is that true? No, I didn't really mention much in the way of food. I did have a couple of pops at you about that, obviously. 
But you did tease me. So when you sent me a list of your food highlights, I was shocked and delighted because I don't think you eat much when you're at Disney World, but we're going to go out through the obscure eating habits of Kevin Curtis Allen for while he's in Disney World. First off, you talk about your, you're trying to lose weight and the what the uh, how well you're doing what me and deborah have done for a long time i've done since i lost my weight i basically in they call it intermittent fasting basically i don't eat normally when we're in the uk until 12 o'clock noon and then i i'm doing that so 12 o'clock it's funny you say that yeah 12 o'clock 30 p.m and it has to be 8 30 p.m okay. it should be 8 p.m but i have my tea break at 8 so at work okay. so it has to go to 8 30 so that's what i do mm -hmm as a normal here in the UK. And Deborah started doing it mm. about three months ago and she's got into it. So we changed the hours around. So that's why there's no breakfasts on here. I've got no breakfast places at all. One of the reasons why we didn't do Boma was we, we both of us don't eat breakfast. So we get mm. up in the morning, we'll have a couple of coffees and then we'll, we'll go to lunchtime. So we changed it a little bit up here. Yeah. We didn't, we started eating at 11 o'clock in the, in the morning and tried to finish around seven in the mm -hmm. evening so that's okay. why maybe the food's a little yeah. bit different we'll have one main meal a day and we'll have a couple of snacks if we want them so that is really how we okay. live normally so we try to stick to that in disney but i kept on saying it down, well, but you've got to still you've got to still go into plaza ice cream you still got to eat that yeah. sort of thing when you're in disney uh, you're only there <laughs> two weeks of the year so it's not going to make that much difference yeah. over the long scheme of things it's so interesting you said that because that was a little side thing that was happening on my trip i we've had several people losing weight in our puta tigger group especially that's been organic and people have been following and holly and tony and and several others i, I ran into dave castro too and had a conversation on this he's he done really, really well. looks good doesn't he yeah I, and I, I need... intermittent fasting is what he's doing kevin i so we only bumped into him it's quite funny because we were actually at the contemporary and we were coming off the monorail and on the way coming off the monorail on that walkway, Rob was walking, Rob Madeira was walking one way and we were walking the other. I shook his hand, had a chat, quick chat with him as we passed, literally. Yeah, and that's right. that, that's the only time I can remember really talking to Rob or G3. Oh. And then we came off, off the walkway, walked into the Contemporary by Contempo Caf. We bumped into the Castros and that's the only time I see the Castros. Okay. They, yeah. So he looked great. And I had, I, you know, I know there's some others that I spoke to that are doing well and it, intermittent fasting came up. So that's what I've been doing. It's the plan I was, I've been on. It's recommended through this work program that they have. Basically they don't, I don't know if, yeah, they, they go into intermittent fasting, but basically don't eat if you're not hungry is one of the big things. But anyways, all right. So we're going to talk about, I, I love this list and I'm, t I have to tease Kevin but quite honestly, when you guys come on the show, you don't have to go to all these really fancy restaurants to impress me because I love every th aspect of the food in Disney World. It could be treats, like you just mentioned ice cream. It could be quick service. It could be a cookie over at Walgreens for all I care. <laughs> I love it all. So thanks, Kat. I'm so impressed you gave me this list. So let's get into it. And I know you're famous when you come over. And you do stay off site a little bit. Is that why you did your number one on your list here is Denny's? Yeah, I said I wouldn't talk about staying off site, but I always, Denny's to us is a an American diner. We used to have one on the Isle of Wight that was a sort of rip off of Denny's and we really miss it. So we do a Denny's or, or we might do another chain like that. Now I know to you Americans, I get some funny looks when I say about going there, but we went to Back to the same Denny's as we went to last year. I had uh, a, a chicken sizzler platter. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing was we went in there, we were chatting to the, the guy, he sat us down, love, lovely chat, said, oh, where are you from? Australia, because everyone seems to think I'm from Australia. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. we had a start <laughs> and then we had, we had the, um, a mixed start with prawns and stuff on it. And it was really nice. And then we had this chicken sizzler, but the kitchen messed up the order and hadn't put it through so we were sat there waiting and he said i haven't got your mains yet and i said no mate i said i'm dying of starvation here and then he literally <laughs> came with a plate of chicken and i looked at it and i said no try this he said keep you going so we had some sweet 
hot sweet chicken that he got them to do quick ah. just to keep us going. So it's really good. We have these sort of <laughs> the sizzling patters. They come on like a, a metal skillet. And I had one of those. I think Deborah yeah. had, had fried a chicken and mash and uh, they call it chicken <laughs> mash and gravy. Tables. Yeah, but we okay. like sizzlers. But we usually have a dessert there. But because we had a starter and he, he gave us some other chicken to try, we, we were too full. So but we really do enjoy going into Denny's just because it's like a proper American diner. Just the atmosphere and the look of it is so different to what we've got in the UK. Like I say, we don't have American diner on the island and there's not that many really around the UK now, American style diners. Okay. I like it. I like it. All right. We'll move on to the Earl of Sandwich. Now we're on property. What'd you guys get at the Earl of Sandwich? That's one of my favorite. I love sandwiches and that one's down we, at Disney Springs. Last time we were there, we didn't, we used to do the Earl of Sandwich a lot. We did a couple mm. of times, I think, in 2019. We did it a lot in 2012 when we had that dining plan. But we were up that end of Disney Springs. So we went over, dropped our bags off at Saratoga and walked over to uh, Disney Springs. And we were hungry. And it was about our past 11, quarter to 12, something like that. And we, because you go in the security that end, right by Earl of Sandwich. It's right there, yeah. So I said to Deborah, yeah. we go in Earl of Sandwich and we'll have some in there. Now, one thing we done this time was we took... Brita water bottles, which have got the filter built mm. in. And oh, we yeah. always had those Good idea. Us because we did buy water from Walgreens to bring with us. But when you're in the park, we were finding we don't drink the ice water you can get from the quick services because it tastes so, so off. Can. It can, yeah. 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 So what we. Sometimes it's okay. Well, I stuck it through. That's a great idea, though. Yeah. So I stuck it through a, a Brita filter and thought, well, I don't know if it's going to work or not. But yeah, best tip there. I mean, I've. Spot on. Yeah, ten dollars or something. Like hey, I think it was really. And the other, no wonder I bring you on the podcast, Kevin. You got tips to bring. Yeah, so we had our <laughs> Brita bottles. So I ordered two sandwiches. I had the I had a BL. Deborah, Deborah had a BLT, and I think I had their special sandwich. I can't remember what's in that, but yeah, I had that. And we only ordered one drink, and then I was because I was drinking water to try because I don't try not to drink too much fizzy stuff. Deborah had a yeah. Coke and stuff, but. Yeah, we had that was like our first meal at Saratoga when we got there. And that earlier sandwich, that's that sandwich is plenty for us, really. I think we had a it's still good, right? Yeah. I think we had something from the pool bar in the evening. I think we had a children's meal for Deborah and I had a burger from and I that was the only burger I had if it's it was that day. I think it was that day. I had a, okay. I had a burger from Was it good? And it was yeah. I don't eat a lot of burgers, very rarely eat beef at all. I had a burger there and it was pretty good from the pool bar. Now we love it. Our room was, we were back in the same block as we were in when we originally went to Saratoga back in 2019, but the room was round the corner. So we had a view of the yeah. car park, which is the first time we've had a view of the car park. Yeah. So are you still, are you still a big fan of Saratoga Springs? Yeah, definitely for that, because you could go down, get your coffee, get your soda from the, from the pool bar. And the pool bar is only just it's the blocks next to it. So location, I think it's great. And then they do mm. what we, you would call fries. We'd call chips, but in the pool bar, yeah. but they don't do those for some reason up in the, uh, the main lobby in, in our artist palette. They don't do, they don't do mm. chips up there or fries as you'd call them. Okay. So that's why we quite like. <laughs> Thanks for the translation. Bar. That's all right. Yeah. We'll we do that as we go on if we can. <laughs> yeah. So. That's the pool bar code. We right. did a few bits right. from the pool bar. We'd get a children's meal or something and split that just if we were hungry when we got back from the park or something. I like the next one. Pizza Safari. And under Pizza Safari, you got chicken, black bean sauce. Yeah. I'm not sure Is if that... that's from Pizza Safari. I think that was from Harambe Marketplace. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. You had chicken at the Harambe? Harambe Marketplace. Yeah, we had chicken. Yeah. I had, again, what we tended to do was order one sort of main meal and a children's meal okay yeah so i went to horombi marketplace no I, I mobile ordered everything i don't think i'm thinking about i don't think i ordered anything at the bar other than at the pool bar at saratoka because i don't think you can mobile order there other than that i think everything else i did mobile ordering and it was Did so you have any problems no no problems. No, no money problems. Revolut like worked, your Apple Pay. The Apple Pay Revolut worked absolutely perfectly. Oh, great! I, no, not, Better than last time. Yeah, I, not a hitch mm. at all. I didn't have to get anyone to pay for any of my meals. Although I did get someone did treat me, <laughs> but we will get to that. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, good. Yeah, we. I think we got. I had a 
chicken in black bean sauce and Deborah had a children's meal and we split the two. All right. So yeah, that was our, uh, after we'd been to course to the lounge with all you guys on that, uh, that first day, first official day. Oh, you did the Nomad Lounge with us? Yes, I was at the Nomad Lounge. <laughs> Honestly. I was thinking this morning, you're going to have to do all the thinking, well, I, remembering. I've this. got my phone open with, with my list of, of food places. My other phone here has got my photographs in, and I've got my iPad as well if I need to, to, to look up anything. So I've basically right. gone through and done I've got a load of notes as well. I've gone through and done it day right. by day, but we won't drone on about every single day. We just do the highlights, I think. <laughs> Plaza ice cream. What'd you get there? Oh, uh, wow. This is a contentious issue, isn't it? We went to Plaza ice cream and I said to Deborah, if they've got the Minnie Mouse, we'll buy that. And of course they only had the Mickey Mouse, didn't they? Oh, okay. So we, we had a couple of Sundays in there and it, they, you can choose at what? Two different ice creams. So we all know what's coming next. Deborah had mint top chip and cookie ice cream, a cookie dough ice cream. <laughs> and uh, what all? Oh, I refer to as toothpaste ice cream. And I had, I think that the first time I had cookie dough and vanilla ice cream. And then they put everything on top and they said, oh, and it comes in a waffle bowl, doesn't it? You can get it in a waffle bowl. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and when we went and sat Fresh. up in, in undercover in the cool and ate those at uh, Magic Kingdom. But yeah, we like, we've got to do mm. plaza ice cream at least once or twice in the holiday. She likes the toothpaste ice cream and you don't. I'm, I'll eat it. My objection, really, in all honesty, is that she won't try anything else. Ah, you're teasing her. Yeah, she won't try anything Dude. else, which is frustrating. She sometimes tries something I have, but as it was two ice creams, she had to try. Not, an awful, not a big selection of ice cream in the plaza. I did notice okay. that. It's only about... All right. I don't like chocolate ice cream. I'm not keen on strawberry. Mm. Yeah. There's mint chocolate. I'm a, I'm a vanilla. Vanilla myself. or cookie dough, I think. If I remember rightly, I think I had okay. strawberry and cookie dough one day in a cone. It's good ice cream, though, too. Yes. I like know, that. It's, I, it's Kelly's, in it, I think, or somebody's. I don't really know. But it's not a... Because now the big thing now, I don't know if it's the same in... Edie. Edie's. That's I it, yeah. Edie's. I don't know if it's the same in, in the US, but the thing to do now is they make your ice cream. So you get a, a base ice cream, then they get it on a block and they put all the stuff in it and and make mm. it in front of you that's the big thing in the uk at the moment let's go to abc commissary it's been one that's been impressive as of late how'd you make out oh we love abc commissary i can remember back in right. i can remember back in the day where they you where it had like do not touch written on the door you know what i mean nobody <laughs> wanted to go there did they it had a terrible <laughs> reputation yeah i don't know about the reputation but i didn't like it <laughs> yeah but no we we had just some normal sort of stuff there i think deborah had chicken strips because that's the the, the problem you, you're going around having to get something for deborah so i can't actually remember yeah. off the top of my head what i had but it, it was it, i think it was a chicken salad and it was good really good there the, right. the salads are, are, are pretty good there i think i definitely now had one. one day we did we did abc commissary twice i think in this old it just happened to be yeah. we were in that area when we were hungry yeah. so convenient right. if you're doing this sort of dieting or far fasting or, or you've changed your really it's a lifestyle change you shouldn't really call it a diet or fasting really it should be that you've, ch you've changed your lifestyle and that's the way you're going to live is that you're going to eat as, as yeah. you're hungry eat yeah Big live point. to eat not eat to live not live to eat that's mm. right isn't it yeah yeah so occasionally you're going to end up eating in when you're in disney in the same place twice because mm. that's when you're hungry works for me but this one really surprised me everyone's going to be curious on your experience at la creperie <laughs> in paris right there's a bit of a back i know back story to this is this is funny <laughs> so we head to france deborah says can we do the crepes today then i said yeah we can go do your crepes so we we're in fr the french pavilion and, and i said look around i said where is it and i'd forgotten this round the corner by ratatouille hmm. and so anyway i so i got to the there's like a concierge desk there, and i said to the lady on there i said excuse me i said where's the crepery and she just glanced up at me looked down went around the corner just didn't make <laughs> eye contact with me didn't smile or nothing and i come out of there and, really yeah, cast member yeah, cast member and i come out there and i turned to deborah i said oh the theming in this french pavilion superb i remember being in my coffee almost went up my nose there dude <laughs> i remember being in paris and, and having that attitude from a gendarme that we asked directions from <laughs> yeah. years ago 
Yeah, so oh, yeah, that's they're, fantastic. They're, they're spot on. They really get in the old the, the international students are back, <laughs> right? I yeah, it was, it's funny. But anyway, we went round and we got two crepes. Deborah had the one Scott will refer to as the Nutella one that's not Nutella, because there must be some reason they can't call it Nutella. Is okay, there, but, it, but it's hazelnuts. Yeah. And I had the compote one, the fruit compote, which if we did it hmm. here, if we made like, we'd call them pancakes, really. Those, what they call crepes, <laughs> we wouldn't call them. That's like, we, we make a crepe like that on Pancake Tuesday yeah. or Shrove Tuesday. And we make it thin like that. Really thin? And, yeah, and then we have like sugar thin, and, okay. and lemon juice with it. That's a traditional thing to do in the UK. So that's what I, I grew up as a pancake. When you see these American thick, round pancakes they're, they're not what i think of as pancakes traditionally so yeah but you like those right i know judy has sent you syrup too yeah i, I like the syrup yeah well, i like the Vermont. pancakes but I, I do avoid them because they are empty calories <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> yeah that is a what did you think of the crepes no. in paris you're right it's just a crepe in it with a bit you got to go can't go far wrong with a bit of a fruit combo yeah you can't go far yeah, wrong yeah. With the, those are the ones that's from the window yeah. right you got them for, yeah, yeah, I think the, okay. the price they charge for them if you go into a sit-down place is a bit extortionate for what they are. And even at $9 or whatever they are at, at a crepery right. isn't cheap for what, what you're getting. But yeah, it was nice. I'm, True enough. It was, we did that on that day when we were on our own in Epcot. And then later on in the holiday, we went, we met up again with Scott after you, everybody had left and they came back. And that was a bit of a, that was a bit of a story. We'll get to that later, perhaps. But yeah, that's All that's right. in my list of food things. <laughs> that was fantastic. Mind. We'll go from that to a Roaring Fork Bear Claw. What were you doing at the Wilderness Lodge? Okay, so if anybody's mm. got a really good memory, then know that I play a little game when I leave the park at sort of 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I go to the first bus, whatever bus is going to a resort. If we've not been to that resort that holiday, or we fancy going to it, we'll get on that bus rather than waiting. So we walked out that's of Animal fun. Kingdom. And then there was a Wilderness Lodge bus right there. So we got straight on it mm. and we went out to Wilderness Lodge. And we've done Wilderness Lodge a couple of times, so we know it, but it's a beautiful resort. And as I didn't get to stay there this time, which I really wanted to, it was uh, my consolation prize to myself. Okay. I like that. That's like a bus roulette. Yeah. I think they yeah. call it sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So we did that. How do you get back to Saratoga from there? Though? I'll just go to Disney Springs, don't you? Okay. Disney Springs, walk through or jump on the boat. Now, I'm a big fan of the bear claw. Yeah. Well, that's a, I'd heard about right? it before. That's a big Danish. Yeah. So we, uh, we go and they get a couple of coffees and this, I picked this bear, Deborah looked at you and went, I said, look, I want, I'm here. I've heard about it. I'm trying it. Right. And you pick it I up. I like that. It's about the size of a house yeah. brick. A and bear. It feels about the weight of a house <laughs> brick. It, a grizzly bear claw. And I, I pick it up and they, you put it in this takeaway box and we went and sat in the uh, foyer of, of Wilderness Lodge eating it. <laughs> and one of the guys, that's great. And one of the guys came over who, who was on the door, from, I think from Bell Services, and looked at me. And goes, oh, you got a bear claw there? And I said, yeah. Mm. And Deborah looked at me as if say, because it's quite sticky, messy sort of thing to eat. And yeah. he said, oh, save us a bit, will you? If there's any left, <laughs> and he could have had some because it took me <laughs> it took us two days to eat that. I think. Oh yeah, you took it home. All right, because that it, it, that I enjoyed it, but boy, that was. Heavy, yeah. That's my kind of treat, yeah. though. I was really oh, glazed. Good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, you know, yeah, because I've not had the cinnamon roll, big cinnamon bun, in Magic Kingdom. I've not mm. ever had that, but I imagine that's along the same sort of lines about yeah, a kilo of sugar and and God knows what else in it. <laughs> but yeah, it was a nice treat with a Joffrey's coffee. It was good. It went down yeah. well. We had a good walk around. This is, I think, at the time, I think Sam was at the bar somewhere, but we couldn't find her. There. Okay. But we, we did have a look, but we couldn't find it. We had a walk around, went and looked at the cabins down there. You did? Yeah. We had a little... Was I there? Yeah. Was I, I know you. I don't know when. I think you'd already stayed there. But we just had a good walk around. Yeah, maybe it's so. a beautiful resort. Stunning place. Really is. The way you're going about this is exactly why I loved your food listings. It's the stories that are behind these and this little adventure to wilderness. It's perfect. It's definitely do these sort of things just for the little fun and you're relaxing too it's hot right the yeah i didn't find this parks. holiday i didn't find the heat too too bad but what i would say is we had a 14 day ticket and we did 13 rope drops hmm. and we did 14 okay. straight days in the parks yeah and you go back at night too and i'd you? go i would go back at night occasionally on my own yeah and it was 
yeah, by about two o'clock in the afternoon, I we were flagging because we were up at six in the morning to try and get virtual queues and stuff like that and get ready. And we did have a rude awakening at the end of our Saratoga stay, which we'll get to at some stage. All right, we got to get through this food. You got like 17 here, and I, I don't think you've even counted it right. Blaze Pizza was one of my must dos that I've never done. What'd you think of Blaze Pizza? Well, Blaze Pizza, we did because last time we came with the boys and we were thinking, oh, what would they eat? And we thought, well, all kids would always eat pizza, wouldn't they? We took them to Blaze Pizza a couple of times. And it's basically, and the way I would describe Blaze is it's Subway's for pizza. That's a great Which, description of it. So basically, you can you choose your dough. So they then do two different doughs, I think. And then you choose what sauce you want and the toppings. And it actually says you're only supposed to have a couple of two or three toppings. But basically, they took on whatever you want. And it's one price. Yeah, I love it. It's a good pizza, too. Yes, yeah, a good, thin, crispy pizza, yeah. And then you get a one of those like it. things for, and it only takes about three or four minutes to cook. You get one of those things, you go and sit down at a table and it buzzes and you, you used to go up and collect it. I love it. Now they're actually bringing it to your table. Deliver it. Nice. Yeah, no. I love it. All right. Contempo Cafe. Yeah. The contemporary, the Contempo Cafe, yeah. we went, used quite a bit when we actually stayed at the Bay Lake and we had. Yeah. Was this your first time staying there? Oh yeah. We never stayed at Bay Lake Tower before. Oh, all right. You got to mix that in too. You got to tell me what you thought of Bay Lake Tower. Weirdly enough, if you stayed in a room and you could see the pool from the room, normally that's a, a premium room, isn't it? I would pool think. View. We could see the pool, pool and, the, <laughs> and, and that the big chess and that other game they play out there. But we were on the ground floor, not the first floor, oh, the ground okay. floor. Yeah. You had a patio so to you had a patio outside. And all our curtains opened out. And literally anybody coming out the pool or anybody mm. playing the games out there were looking straight into our living room and our bedroom. So most <laughs> of the time, the actual the actual curtain stayed closed, which brought up the other issue I've got with Bay Lake Tower is there's no lights in there. Oh, you, really? You go around and you switch on every single light in the Bay Lake Tower and it's still dark. Because <laughs> I'm not... I'm, I'm assuming there are la- with those windows open, with all the curtains open, there's plenty of light during the day. But it's once you've got those curtains closed or it's night, it is there's not enough light in there for Interesting. me. What Interesting. a room. I wonder how you got the ground floor. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't realise that that, that, that that there were any rooms on the ground floor. And I think they're only round the back I, by the pool. Okay. Yeah. I've, first I've heard of it. Obviously, yeah. if you look when you walk out to the pool, there's patios with chairs out. So we never sat out on that patio. And at Saratoga Springs, our patio, we were on the second floor. Yeah, you'd call it the second floor. I'd call it the first floor. But yeah, we were up, up on the second floor. So we had a patio, but our patio door, when you went to open it, wedged and you couldn't open it. And then sometimes you couldn't get it locked, the patio door. <laughs> okay. So I didn't use that as much as I would have done normally. <laughs> but the, the trouble is you're not there long enough, really, to use that. Did, we, did you get anything good at the Contempo Cafe? Yeah. So I was just trying to think what well, I had like the Tempo Cafe. I think I had another salad. Deborah, though, had the cheese toasty and the soup. And when she had that, that was oh, it. Yeah? But everyone was like, oh, we're going to go for something to eat. All right, okay, can we go back to the town for a calf? We are the other side. We are in the Grand Floridian. Oh, no, I don't want to go back to the Contempo calf. So we didn't eat in the Grand Floridian. There's no quick service in there anyway. So we took the monorail back and had to eat in. Yes, there is. Well, quick service the in, Grand Floridian. in the Grand Floridian. Yeah. yeah, there is. Where's that then? I couldn't. I think it's called Gasparillo's. It's more towards Magic Kingdom. Oh. It's on that side. Yeah. There you go. A little Even tip learn. for you. We did, eat, <laughs> we did eat in the Contempo, I think, about three times. I think Deborah every time. I think. Oh, so she liked that. Yeah. I had salad one Grilled time. Grilled cheese. I had a flatbread pizza in there one time. And I had a meatball sub in there one time. And I had a... In the, I thought the menu looked better in the last I remembered yeah. it. Yeah. Pretty good in there. happy, right? You can... Because, yeah. again, I just order it in... When I was in Bay Lake, in our room, Bay Lake Town, we were going or on the monorail going there. I put the order in. And as soon as yeah. we got off and we were just hit, we are here, go and find a seat, sit down and... and How many nights did you do there? We did four nights. That's... The, nice. Because I made the mistake missing out one night. I checked yeah. out at Saratoga Springs on the 8th 
and I checked in to Baylek Tower for three nights on the ninth, and I phoned up DVC to to combine my two Saratoga spring stays. They said, "Oh, you haven't got a room on the eighth. I said, "Yeah, I have." No, you haven't. I said, "Does that fall off?" Then you know, you never had one booked. So oh, then, well, yeah, I remember this. You found this out late, like, yeah, when it was you were only a few weeks before. So we uh, we waitlisted Saratoga and we waitlisted Bay Lake Tower. So I went online and had a look to see what room I could get for cash. I think I could get one of the moderate for around two hundred and pounds, something like that, for the night. I couldn't, yeah. And this is what was interesting. I couldn't book a value resort for one night unless I bought tickets through the UK t- travel agents. Oh, okay. Which was bizarre. Mm. But anyway, right. it came, Mandy Ray was going to book me a night at Pop Century or somewhere like if needs be. So it wouldn't have been an issue, but it would have been another move. But then Bay Lake Tower came through and they sorted that out for us. So that worked out all right. All right. Of course, while I was talking to him, I tried to upgrade my tickets to annual passes, which is why I'm coming next September was to do two trips on one annual mm. pass. Yeah. They wouldn't allow me to do it online on the on the phone. I can't do it online. I can't do it on the phone. I, I said to them, this was talking to DVC, so I phoned back and spoke to Disney Ticket in. They couldn't do it. No, they mm-hmm. couldn't upgrade it to any annual pass. No matter what the cost was or what pass it was, they couldn't do it. So I got to Disney Springs after going to Earl of Sandwich. I went round to uh, customer services in, in Disney Springs and asked them, as soon as I meant, as soon as I spoke to them, so I want annual pass. They said, have you got a UK ticket? I said, yeah, cannot make any exceptions anymore. I said, that's funny because my friend did it two weeks ago. Somebody <laughs> on Facebook had done it two weeks ago. So I was going, oh, yeah. So I was a bit, I was a bit yeah. frustrated. And the, the frustration is that I've already booked my time off of work and it, it, it's not movable or doing anything different. Mm-hmm. So I'm locked into next September, which we'll talk about at some stage. But yeah, mm-hmm. who, Kadebakaf. If we ever get through this food. Yeah, if we ever get through this food. I told you. Did you get the annual did you get did you get the annual pass? No. Really? No. And that was one of the Come reasons on. why we were trying to do it on a bit of a budget, because I thought I was gonna spend about mm. twelve hundred dollars on two annual passes. So about six hundred dollars. I was thought it would yeah. if it had been six hundred dollars to up to upgrade it, it would have been worth my me doing it. Much more than six hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I might as well just buy another fourteen day ticket which is what I am about to yeah. do the next day or two okay. before they go up again. Okay. Good idea. Yeah. Because that's the first All thing right. I Boardwalk Bakery, the Reuben sandwich. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. I didn't know they had one there. We got on the boat when we were at Hollywood Studios to come out. And I said, Deborah, we'll go and do the boardwalk. We'd done Hollywood Studios while we were at Bay Lake Tower. So we got on the friendship boat and came back to the boardwalk and then got to the bakery I still we 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 go in and see what they've got in here, and I do it. I heard talk of Reuben sandwiches, and I don't know what's in there. So meat, what animal that meat comes from? A hot dog meat. <laughs> that's something I won't have is hot dogs. I don't like hot dogs. So <laughs> I thought I'll, I'll try the Reuben sandwich, and guess what? They're bread, cheese toasty, and oh, an ice cream. No cheese toasty and soup oh, again. <laughs> perfect. Why? That, the Boardwalk Bakery really comes through. So she had that, but she doesn't reckon. And funnily enough, you had a choice of coleslaw or soup with the Reuben sandwich. So I had coleslaw. Mm-hmm. And when I got it, I got okay. two soups. So I said to the young lady, I'm, I'm sorry, I've got two soups. I want the coleslaw. She's like, give me a minute. She just give me the coleslaw. She said, keep the soup. So we had two soups and, and the coleslaw. <laughs> but yeah, it was, I thought the soup was lovely. Oh, yep. I like that. That's a good spot for a sandwich. Yeah, it is a awesome. good little bakery, that. I have used it. Yeah, I think I do. it's changed, hasn't yeah. it, in the last year or two? Yeah, it's good. I stayed there my last day when I did the TDC, and so I was in there. Egg sandwiches I had. I wasn't on the program at the time. I'm a big fan of egg sandwiches. Don't give me that face. <laughs> I'm not a fan of egg I won't sandwiches. I don't have that. I will eat them. Must be, yeah, I'm not a fan of egg sandwiches at all. It's a smell of them. All right, let's go to... Space 220, which Margita, Judy, and Ken had never been to before. Was that your first time? Yeah. So I'm sat in, me, in my room and I get this message from Samantha. Do you fancy mm-hmm. doing Space 220 tomorrow? So I, I said, okay. I said, so I replied back, yeah, okay, but don't tell Deborah how much it's going to cost. Because the actual <laughs> fixed menu is quite expensive. Yeah. And oh, yeah. I'm, I said, yeah. And so I said, yeah, we'll do it. And I, I said to Deborah, well, 
Deirdre and uh, Sam have invited us to go to Space 220. And Deborah said, oh, I would really, I really fancied doing that. And I went, what? Ah, she goes, yeah. Now, that, that, you. Yeah. So I started, we'd do it then. And then Sam came back and said, no, we're going to do the lounge, yeah. which I think looking at it is the way to go. And it's definitely worth it. Most people say that, you, yeah. You've got to do it once. It's one of those experiences that's yeah. very novel, very different, and, and I agree. immersive. So, yeah, we really enjoyed it. The, the, yeah. the, uh, I videoed the, the lift up and, the, and that sort of thing. And yeah. I took some video in there of the big screens of the, of the windows. It reminded me, weirdly enough, it reminded me of a, a meal we had back in 2007. We were at SeaWorld, and they've got a big shark tank. And they've got a restaurant that the shark tank is oh. inside the shark tank. So you, yeah. you've got the big windows and the sharks coming by. So it was, although it was space, it was a similar sort of concept. I understand. Yeah, and we, we really enjoyed it. I had the yeah. beef sliders. I think they were braised beef sliders I had. Yeah. And Deborah. Nice choice. Deborah, I believe, had. You wrote chicken and waffle. Yeah, she had chicken and waffle. I think that's, that... I think that's what Deirdre had. I think Deborah and Deirdre had the same thing. Uh. And Samantha had, I believe, it was octopus or some seafood. It was just the four of you? Yes, just the four of us, yeah. Nice. It was nice, yeah. It was nice to spend some time with Deirdre and and Sam. Yeah. Well done. Sam will pop up again later on. (laughs) She will pop up audio-wise. Yeah, so I really enjoyed that. But funnily enough, I'm sure if when you do Deirdre's trip report or Sam's on a trip report, they'll make reference to how they found us outside space 220 so i won't share that i hope they do <laughs> i'm planning on having them on so beer garden Sim, tonight beer. yeah beer garden in germany so just the big meetup that was a event that, that was that was after the picture and stuff like that wasn't it but yeah on saturday we bumped into uh, into nick and barbie and we were walking through the uk pavilion with nick and barbie so i said to him and this is an ongoing thing oh i said oh, I said, yeah. oh do you fancy a drink in the Rose and Crown? I said, because one of my colleagues is working there now, Matt. Remember that name, Matt? It'll come up a lot. So he goes, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I could do it. It looks quite busy. I said, I'll go and ask the girls at the Yorkshire Fish and Chips if Matt's working from the Isle of Wight. And if he is, we'll go in. So I go over. I said, oh, girls, uh, do you know Matt from the Isle of Wight? Oh, yeah, little Matty. Yeah, no, he's not working today. <laughs> I said, no, okay. right, fair enough. Then we had a walk around the shops in the UK pavilion and laughed at the price of everything in there. And <laughs> and then we came down to the beer garden with um, Nick and Barbie. What a lovely couple they are. Yeah. I had some great moments with Nick. He's going to be on the podcast in one of the round tables too, which I'm excited about. And we had lots of good times. I'm so glad. He's thinking about putting the band back together, the podcast, well, right? The might, Disney Exchange. There might, there might be some involvement there. Yeah, and I'd, I'd be glad to help out, too. I, I knew you were already committed to helping a little bit on the back end or our front end. I'm not sure. I just great. said to him, because he said they didn't, Dave didn't, Dave did all the recording and editing. So I said to him, look, if I get you up, up and running, I'm quite willing to record it with you for you and edit it and mm. go from there. Because I'd like to get him back out there. And I'd like to obviously podcast back up and running. I think that those two yeah. are really good. Who's the other one? That's why I'm stumbling because I can't remember her name. Lisa Green. Lisa, I'm sorry, Lisa. And you won't edit that out, will you? You won't edit out that I yes, couldn't I remember Lisa's name because I know what so and so you are now. If you were an editor like me, you would edit that out, but I know you won't. I've got a cold. Beat, That'll get I'll you back. On, I'm going to hold that. I keep on putting my head. To, I can hold that one against yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Bless her. Yeah. But nice. they, they, I think the when they did the podcast together with that, with david that was i really enjoyed that because there was quite a bit of humor in there and my sort of humor as well i know they were great yeah absolutely yeah, so hopefully uh, well, what'd you think of the beer garden yeah we liked it deborah liked it as well and she's not a massive meat eater because it's mostly a meat fest isn't it yeah, meat and potatoes for sure yeah no it's german we've not gravy do you know what we don't get german restaurants do you have a german restaurants in the states we don't have a we do. I don't think you could. I can't think of ever seeing a German restaurant in the UK. Italian. They're, pro- they're probably still a little bit bitter of all the bombing they did on you. <laughs> yeah. To be honest with you. We're willing to drive their cars. So I don't know why we're not willing to eat their food. Touche. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, that was first. You'd think so because, hey, you know what? I got to say to you, hats off to your 
Raglan Road restaurant related to the UK. Oh, what? I tell you that that menu is fantastic. Yeah, I really enjoyed You know enjoyed what? It, it's strange, but uh, I've never had anything to eat in. I've never been in Raglan Road as a bar at all, ever. Mm. Yeah, it was like me. I had that. You may have heard me say that early in the podcast. I had that problem for a long time. Well, I haven't been in there. We did, I did go into go the, there. the shop next door, and actually I bought a flat cap because I, I've been looking for one for ages in the UK, and I couldn't find one I liked. And Deborah, oh, you found it there, yeah. And Deborah talked me into buying one. I'm not sure about now, but there you go. But, yeah, it's, it, it looks like a, a fairly good representation. Also, I think that the, hopefully the Guinness would be better there. I'd hope that they could keep it a little bit better. So it's something you've got to have a bit of experience to keep Guinness. It doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> store well. And yeah, America and beer, I, I've got some problems. <laughs> I've lost my place. Where are we? What's well, next? We, beer garden, we were with Sean and Jason on the table as well. So I really ought to give them a shout out. We had a great sort of time. I introduced Sean to Lager Shandies. Which, oh. So we ordered, I ordered a, everyone, I ordered a beer and I was drinking and I went, and Deborah had got a Sprite. And I said, oh, I think I'll have a Sprite as well. So I got a Sprite and I'll mix the two. To make because it would should be what we would call lemonade, but your lemonade's different to ours. It's not carbonated like our lemonade is, and our lemonade's more like your sprite. Right. We'd have sprite and lager. That's to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. If I was going into a pub in America and it's hot like it was in Florida, I would drink a lager shandy over anything else. Okay, it's much more refreshing That's than just good. a lager. So just that, yeah. that sweetness have that. of the lemonade with it. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that what they have in Magic Kingdom at the the Jungle Cruise Canteen there? They have that shandy. Do they? Yeah, but that would probably, yeah. I would imagine that's probably made with bitter. <laughs> it's certainly, yeah, if I'm you ask, sure. if you walked into the, if you walked into a British pub and asked for a shandy, you're not getting lager. Mm. You're getting bitter okay. with lemonade. Oh. Whereas I, I okay. drink lager with lemonade because it's more refreshing. And I drink a lot. I would drink okay. lager over bitter most of the time, personally. They had that at the beer garden. Yeah. Beer garden's all lager. It's Germany. On the menu. It's Germany. So I had a, I, know, I had a Bex. I used to drink <laughs> in my younger days. I used yeah. to drink Bex, bottles of Bex by the, okay. by the crate load. So that was my beer of choice. Wow. That and my, so you drink their beer and drive their cars. Yeah, I drink their beer and drive their cars, yeah. Yeah, because I own German. <laughs> I own a German and French cars. I'm a terrible hypocrite. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, so, yeah, we enjoyed Beer Garden. The food was good, and there was a nice selection there. I'd, I'd probably do it again. I'm Rose not... and Crown. Did you get the drink? I see on your list you have an exclamation point, Rose and Crown drink. Yeah, so if we move on. So this day, we were going to Epcot, and I get a message from Karen saying, what are you doing? I can't remember if it was Saturday or I got, Sunday. I got the glass. You got the glass. So I get a message from Karen saying, what are you doing I think it was the Saturday. And I said, oh, we're going to Epcot. She said, oh, would you mind if we come and join you? And I said, yeah, come down and we'll walk around Epcot with you and we'll showcase. So we, we go to Epcot. I get on the virtual queue. I get two two virtual queues for Guardians of the Galaxy, which I do every time. I get a virtual queue. I've got two. And I use Deborah's magic band to go back on because she ain't going on Guardians. And that's a great ride. I really enjoy that Guardians. <laughs> it's yeah, you love the rides. Yeah, I know. Space Mountain on steroids. It's really good. It's a great ride, but it it's no Manta or or Mako or uh, yeah. Iron Guazi. So it's not a big, the big real. Yeah, you like the intense intense ones. roller coasters. But having said that, you know, doing a couple this time, I learned that. Well, let's. I learned that Scott office. Scott likes them as well. Yeah, Karen. No, I don't. I think he's he's actually said. I was surprised. I was. He said it does. He does feel a little bit nauseous on that. Yeah, Guardians. I can see that. Regard. I loved it. I think it's great. I think it's a brilliant ride, yeah. Guardians. And I, I have got the audio of it. And I went on with four, three, three other blokes, and I said to him like, as we were walking, I said, "I'm going to mm. record this." He said, "That's all right." Yeah. I said, "Are you yeah. going to scream?" They said, yeah. "Yeah, don't worry, we'll scream like girls." And then one of them said, I've been on before, but these two, it's their first time. So I've got that recorded. So that might be interesting. But yeah. It's... Was it people that you knew? No, just people in the queue. Did you have any of those moments where someone recognized you like you've had in the past? Yeah. yeah. So back to Contempo Cafe, and I'm just finishing my dinner. 
And this bloke walks up to me and goes, hi, are you Kevin Curtis Allen? And I said, yeah. Oh, he said, I'm just over here doing some work. And and I, I, I thought I'd wait for you to finish your, your, your food. And then I'd come over and introduce myself. And it was, and I'm, I'm stalling because I'm trying to find who it was because I can't remember off the top of my head. And you won't edit this out neither, will you? No, mate. Oh, I can't remember who it was. Oh, I want to know. Oh, no. I'm, now you got me got you interested. intrigued. What, was it someone from that I would know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here it is. John South. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I didn't know he was around. Yeah. He was working in the Tempo Cavalry. I hadn't know, noticed him. And he came over and had a chat with me. Or introduced himself. And then his name went completely out of my mind. And I had to message the photo we took to Tony and ask what his name was. So I couldn't remember. <laughs> Terrible were names. I was terrible. I did bump into somebody else in Bay Lake Tower that's quite quite famous. Josh, yeah? Josh DeMorrow. Oh, that was like on your last day left, or something? Yeah. yeah, he come up yeah. and said to me. I, I thought you were joking about that. Yeah, he come up and said to me, are you Kevin Curtis Allen? I said, yes, Josh, I am. But I'm busy at the moment. So, <laughs> yeah. I, he, I, don't have a, I don't have a night booked. I don't have my night booked. Can you help me out? <laughs> he came in and he just said hello. And I said to him, are you Josh? He went, oh, hello. Are you enjoying your stay? Yeah. And he was gone sort of thing. And I said to, awesome. to the guys on Bell Service, he said, oh, yeah, he always stays here. He's been here a few nights. Yeah. So where yeah, were we? Maybe his so, office is there. So we, where were, yeah, we're, we're we were about re- Scott and reviewing Karen. your food. Yeah, we were talking about Scott and Karen. Yeah. I thought Scott and Karen. We're going to have a drink at Rose and Crown. Yeah, well, we're going to get to that. Patience. We're only 57 <laughs> minutes in. This is the only episode where I get the whole podcast intertwined with the food. Yeah. <laughs> Scott and Karen are going to come and join us. And I get a message from Scott. We've hit traffic. Okay, fair enough. Their drive from Tampa to Disney World's about an hour and a quarter, I think. Anyway, so we go off. Me and Deborah do a bit of shopping. I do Guardians of the Galaxy twice, and that takes about an hour and 45 minutes, even though they're both virtual queues, to go around mm. twice. And then we do a bit of shopping. We get a coffee, and then we're starting to go around to World Showcase, look at my phone. They're still in traffic. They're still in traffic. So we go to the in we first booth we hit on our own is the India Pavilion. So I get two samosas from the India Pavilion. I used to work with a lot of Indian ladies, and they would very often mm-hmm. bring me in food, about samosas and stuff like that that they made at home. So I've eaten some really good samosas at, at times, authentic sort of stuff. Yeah. And what is that? I don't know that I know. Well, what I suppose is. It's, it's it's basically all vegetables in 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 a ball, but they made them up in like a triangle, and they put a sauce on them. And I'm not, I wasn't keen on the sauce, but they were pretty good from the India Pavilion. Vegetable samosas, okay. so they're, yeah, I think they'd be vegan appropriate, and that's probably why they're on the menu. Sure. So we had that, and then they're sure. coming out about, I think they're five and a half dollars, and there was two of them. And like Deborah said, if you had it before, okay. she'd have the sauce on the side. So if someone's going to try the samosas. Get the sauce put on the side yeah. rather than over the samosas because she didn't like the sauce. That's where my problem with Indian food t- typically has been with the spices and the sauces. Yeah. So I, that's a good advice. I, like I say, worked with some Indian women and they used to bring in onion barges. Oh, man. And they would, I could do with some now because that would clear your nasal passage. I'm telling you. They, that's a good They thing. like their yeah, food can... spicy. They like their food spicy. Yeah. True. Yeah, so right. we did the Indian. Then we went on to the Outback booth, which is the Australian booth. And we had, I've got a photograph. Of it. It's like a, a little salad with beans and okay. stuff like that in it. And that was pretty good. I think that was about $5. Nice little portion there. Mm. So we're, we're now sitting wow. actually eating. We actually got a table outside there, which is unheard of, isn't it? When you're going mm. around doing food and wine. Yeah. We did a bit of uh, dustbin dining while we were there with Karen. <laughs> so we're still waiting for Karen and that to come. So we go to the Norway Pavilion. So you have a walk around there. I have my photograph with na- naked Elsa. And and then... In, <laughs> Not everybody knows what that is. Naked Elsa. Like, it's a, she's actually a runner. You look look it up. She's a runner. Oh, yeah, really? She's a runner. She's From, one of their long-distance runners that won Olympic gold, I think. Uh, but it's right. always referred to as naked Elsa <laughs> by the, uh, the geeks and the Scott <laughs> and that. Yeah. So yeah. Scott's still not arrived, so we're still kicking our heels waiting for Scott and Karen. Three and a half hours it took them to do the journey, and they finally meet us really? just before Boy, the Belgian beef. Something. 
waited for him in the shade there. And they come and met us there. So, yeah, it took them three and a half hours to come. Worked out for us because we had a nice little mosey round for an hour or two. <laughs> but it must have been frustrating for them. Must have been frustrating. Right. So but you got us, your... They joined us and we went in a Japanese pavilion and had a look around them. I think... I think Scott bought himself some Japanese sweets. Deborah bought some Japanese stuff she buys here in the UK. And she pointed out some mm-hmm. Oreo stuff that they'd sell in the Japanese pavilion that Karen was looking at. She said, yeah, we can get that in the UK for about $1.50. I think it was about 5 oh, to $6. Okay. And it was an Oreo. <laughs> it has a photograph of Oreos on, but they're like little sticks of Oreo. Mm. So weird little things. Okay. But Deborah buys those from Home Bargains in the UK. So she's funnily enough, she mm, just bought, she likes her sweets. Yeah, she like she just bought some when she went out this weekend and did a did a shop over there. Yeah, so we had, All right. so after going to the Japanese pavilion, we watched some of the drummers drumming on the Japanese pavilion, which is always good to see. We then moved on to the next pavilion. I think we got we went to was I wanted to go there when we went to the crepes earlier in the holiday. Uh, okay, the Belgian waffles. Yeah. yeah, so I had a Belgian waffle. Yeah. I should have had the chicken. I think there's one with chicken, but I had the one with, mm-hmm. with fruit compote on. Oh, I love that's one of my Good. desserts. If I, I'd have something, huh? so we all is there whipped cream on it? No, I don't have cream on it. I'm just trying mm. to remember what Scott and Karen had. I'm it sure spot they on. It. it was spot on. Good, really nice. Yeah, really good. Yeah, really love enjoyed it. that. So that so then we went round to the, the French pavilion and had crepes as well. Straight after that. <laughs> Well, well, you guys packed it in this trip on this this Epcot trip. Yeah, so we went to. <laughs> they went around. They we me and Deborah just bought one crepe, and we had the compote one this time because that's the one I like. So we had that and shared that. Scott and Karen, I think, had had one each. I think they had it. One had the Nutella one, and one had the uh, fruit one. And we were mm-hmm. trying to find somewhere to sit there, and we ended up eating off a dustbin around there because there used to be tables around there. I'm sure there used to be tables around there. What's a dustbin? Oh, What's a dust trash bin? can. Thank you for the a translation. Translation. Yeah, there's going to be another little <laughs> translation for you in a minute. You're, you're going to find amusing. Okay. All right. We then we're walking around, and obviously after France comes a UK pavilion. So I said, "Come on, we go and see if Matt's here." So I go up to the girls in the chip shop outside. Said to him, "Is Matt working today?" "No, he's day off." Or, "No, he's not until later." And I looked and, and oh, I said to Scott, two, two strikes, two. Yeah. Two. I think we ended up with three strikes. I think we got him on the four. I think I got him on the fourth mm. time. It might be the third time. Okay. So anyway, I said to look to Scott and I said, Scott, you're here with a Brit. You're outside the British pub. We got to go in and have a beer, haven't we? And he said, yeah, no problem. <laughs> don't need, don't need to be game. asked twice, yeah. did he? So he went in <laughs> no. and I ordered a pint of old speckled in, which I would drink in the UK, but, it wouldn't be my choice because it was either that or heart lager or this black and tan and half, which is what Scott and Karen had. Guinness and something, right? Yeah. That's how I describe it. Yeah. Yeah. Now I spoke to Luke Carmen. I spoke to Luke yeah, last night and he's a big Guinness drinker and he worked for Guinness. Right? This guy oh, worked yeah. for Guinness and he's never okay. heard of it. Hmm, okay. So I've never Guinness heard of mixing variety. Guinness. Yeah, Deborah had a lager shandy, right. like I said earlier, and she she said that was great. But we had like four drinks in there. The disappointing thing is it was in the a bar. Piece? It was quite busy, so we went outside. But they give it you in a plastic glass, a plastic yeah, I, a rotor, just a plastic glass, not a proper glass. Yeah, <laughs> and they serve bitter. So my old speckle end is a bitter, basically. They serve it yeah. cold cold <laughs> they serve it chilled like lager yeah over here we that's what we do for everything i just i know i'm sorry yeah it's not authentic no and funny enough the girl that served us i said oh i can apple pay yeah she goes and i was waiting for her to bring the machine for me to apple pay she said no give me your phone hey so i face authorized the transaction she went off of my phone and you shouldn't let i don't like letting my card out of my sight <laughs> let them off first deb was like right. having kittens behind me and then we, <laughs> luckily, when it comes back, it pings up straight on the top of every transaction. But yeah, we wouldn't do that in the UK. But that was the, wouldn't, the only time really I had an issue with Apple Pay. And I never used a physical you card know, all the time I was there. If they, Oh, good. 
They, you know, if they served warm beer, they would get lots of complaints. I'm just telling you, hey, this beer's warm. They tried to be authentic. It was, I suppose you could, it's an air-conditioned place, isn't it? So it's not going to be warm. But yeah, it's, yeah, no, I, I couldn't get over drinking cold bitter out of a plastic glass. I, I think it's the same with the spices in Disney World. There's a lot of places they won't go real authentic because yeah. people probably can't handle their authentic spices that the hot that a lot of the ethnic foods have yeah i just I, that was the only disappointing thing for me and i well, i said to scott you gotta mm. come in you know when are you gonna have another opportunity to go in a pub with a brit sort of thing i don't know how many other yeah. british friends he's got thing. so we did that and that and then i said to him what was that i saw in it i said yeah i said if we knew, I think it's something like it. I said, if we knew somebody that could take us up to the the DVC lounge and come, oh, that's a good idea. Let's go to the DVC lounge and get out the heat. Mm-hmm. So that was very passive aggressive of yeah, you. Yeah, something like that. It that may have I may have dressed it up a little bit, but basically that's what <laughs> happened. So then we walk round to the to basically Figment. So we go in there, and she goes, oh, "I'll get us checked in." So me and Scott are wandering around the shop, and she's going to be about thirty minutes. And we thought, okay, so we're we'll wandering around the shop. So I'm trying on figment hats. So Scott's trying on hats, and we're taking photographs. I'm pout into these <laughs> and doing all these silly things, yeah. messing around. And then they call us up. So we go up to the. I've been to the lounge. We went up there, didn't we? Right. So we go up to the lounge, and it's empty. There's hardly anybody up there. Yeah, they start to wait twenty minutes for a table. Yeah, I think. I don't know why they do that. I know. Was it just opening? I don't know. I know. But so we sat there for I, oh, I, absolutely. It felt like ages. We had a couple of coffees and a coke. And the weird okay. thing, I think we had this last time. The weird thing is no bathrooms up there, is there? No. You've got to get downstairs, out of the go. shop, round the corner. <laughs> and around <laughs> half a mile away. Yeah. It's true. Really strange. True enough. But yeah. I got to ask you, Kevin. I see a couple more things on here I want to ask you. The Satuli Canteen, you had a miss, looks like. Yes and no. So, no, those bower buns that were the big thing, like, they're supposed to taste yeah. like burgers. So, we had a serving of those, and then we had a protein bowl with noodles and chicken, right? And that protein bowl was fantastic. Really enjoyed that. But mm. come right. off about the buns this time, the bower buns. Yeah, we eat quite a few of them here in the UK, so I think perhaps we got used to the ones we have here, and we didn't think they were as good. I don't know. I think I've had mixed reviews on those. And there might be something those are like that a wrapped. They don't do so well if they're left and... out or something like that. I don't know because the dough which is strange because the everybody loves the protein balls at Satuli. Yeah, I... but good to know you had a miss with the bow buns. Yeah, I, I the protein bowl was great. We'd have just had we. She Deborah half it and I half it and we have one of those bar buns each. But yeah, it's uh, those protein bowls are good value. And I've gone back there again, but we just weren't like I said earlier. We just weren't hungry and in that location. And and it was like, because you're always in Pandora first thing. So what you do is you go to Pandora, and you go and and you ride yeah. Avatar and you ride the the River Journey. And we done that on yeah. one occasion and we're off before the the park had even opened and done them both. Yeah. Now, Nothing else is open because we made this mistake when mm-hmm. we were in Animal Kingdom one day. We went the other way around and we were going to do India and all that, but nothing's open that side. It's only Avatar mm-hmm. and, and that that's open. So you, everyone's just over oh, there, okay. yet they don't open Satuli Canteen for breakfast, which they should do, really. That no. should be open at yeah. a park opening and doing some sort of breakfast option yeah. because people go mm-hmm. straight there. But they could do a good one too. I'm something sure they unique, could do something, maybe. couldn't they? But yeah, I, I like I'd go idea. back there, definitely. But whether I'd have my bar buns again, I don't know. The last one I want to ask you about is Kona Cafe, because I'm a big fan of that. And you probably did that while you were at Bay Lake Tower. It's a nice, easy one to do. What would you have there? Yeah, Kona Cafe. We, so we went a couple of times. We got the monorail. So I said, Deborah, when we're staying at Bay Lake, what we do is we get the monorail and we hop around there. So we took the monorail and we did the Grand Floridian and on the way back we popped in the Polynesian. I'd look I'm excited I think the shopping round with Polynesian's fantastic. I really like and I think Deborah bought a couple I, of little bits there. I definitely bought a yeah. my other ride a monorail to put on the back of my car. So you've got a picture of a monorail, it says my other rides a monorail, which I thought was quite good. So I had that. 
and I've got a magnet that is, and I've got another magnet that says Merva rides a Millennium Falcon. So yeah, oh, yeah, I, nice, I, perfect. That's for what you. I spent yeah. a lot of my money on this time was magnets for the back of magnets, cars and yeah. the fridges. Yeah, yeah, and they're dear. Perfect. They're fifteen fifteen dollars a pop. Those ones. <laughs> yeah. So we <laughs> yeah, went to Kona cheap. and we had them. Um, Deborah had a children's meal again. I think chicken mm. strips or something like. That. No, I correct myself. We got a couple of sides. I think we had onion, I think onion rings and fries or something like that. And then we had a, a noodle bowl. I can't remember now off the top of my head. Polly, what is that? Oh, sweet and sour. Sweet and sour. <laughs> That's auto correct for you. Yeah. yeah, we had a sweet and yeah, so I had sweet and sour chicken there then I must off. Yeah, sweet oh, nice. and sour chicken somewhere, but I can't remember where it was. So that might well have been at a Polly. That makes sense. Yeah, I like Asian, that. yeah. So yeah, we had that and we had a couple of sides there and shared. But yeah, it's, I like it. It's quite a nice little location down there under Polly. We had a walk around mm-hmm. the Polynesian. We were supposed to be meeting up with Paul Doland at some stage, but we just never got around to being in the same place at the mm-hmm. same time. Kevin, I'm really proud of your food. I think you could be a food blogger. Look out, John Self. Huh? <laughs> Can we talk about, Can I talk about your trip now? <laughs> we talk about my trip to Walt Disney World. Now. You have anything else? You got 15 minutes. I want to know everything you did at Disney World in 15 minutes. <laughs> I have to. Say- Here's the thing, Rick. It's gonna be. A, we're gonna leave a cliffhanger so that everyone comes to your podcast to listen to all the details. I I have to say, like when we had that photograph taken, where we normally have it taken in Epcot, I said to Deborah, I got up in the morning, so I'm gonna put two t-shirts on. I put the one on from your podcast, and I'm gonna put on my own t-shirt. Now I had to change my logo so it doesn't say Disney, so it actually says on it, it's not a timeshare, it's a vacation club. And it's got the castle in the middle. So I put that shirt on. So I wandered up. Traditionally, I don't wear the correct shirt to your meet up, which is a beef we have, have had from the beginning, which all started because I had three T-shirts for three days at the very first G3 I came to. And mm-hmm. I, on that Saturday, I wore the Disney Crush T-shirt because I got the T-shirt for your meet up on the Sunday and I didn't want to wear it on a Saturday. You mixed up? Yeah. No, I didn't mess up. I knew I was wearing the right, to me, it was the right t-shirt for the right day. It wasn't the right for you. So I've done you that. You got me all I, confused. So those of you who don't know, Kurt made a speech and involved everybody. And I was going to, I said, Deborah, when I go to take my shirt off, grab out my, the shirt below because I don't want to show everybody my white body. <laughs> no one needs to see Your that. Belly. <laughs> no, so you I'm, can't get that off. No, you're talking. You said, oh, come over here, Kevin. I'm, I'm going to do a speech and you're involved. I'm like, trying to tuck the other shirt into my shorts so as I don't pull both shirts off at the same time. I messed up your intro. But yeah, it's, it. I, I enjoy that when you make a speech. Like, I was just waiting for you to cry. I, I held up, didn't yeah, I? You kept it together. You must be, I was thinking about Kevin Curtis Allen in the stiff upper lip of the Brits. <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I did it. Yeah, it's yeah. not so much traditionally you'd, you'd see in the UK, a man crying. But yeah. But oh, those yeah. days, Again, I'm, I'm sorry. You guys mean a lot to me. What can I tell you? <laughs> so I want to quickly share this story about Samantha. I'm going to share it on here, Samantha. I'm sorry. At the end of the day, when we were with Scott and Karen, we're walking out of the park and Scott goes, oh, come on, we'll give you a lift back home to Saratoga. Okay. So we get in their car and we're driving back to Saratoga and this text message comes over the phone. Now his car, it's got Apple Play in it, right? <laughs> I know this story. <laughs> I heard this. So how am I supposed to know, insert swear word, everything <laughs> comes over the phone and, and we all look at each other. Over, over the car audio, over the right? Over the car over audio. The and we were looking and he's laughing. <laughs> I'm going, who was that from? He goes, Samantha. And, I, and he goes, I don't know what she's on about. I goes, no, nor do it's I. It's a text-to-speech thing, yeah, right? It, it, text-to-speech yeah, it, thing? Yeah. So she's texted it and it speaks it out to you. Over Apple Play and a voice message. It's just a text message. Yeah. So we're all laughing about it. So we get back and I said, I've got to, I've got to send Sam a message. So yeah. I'm there and I, I, <laughs> and I say to Scott, come on, we'll record a quick message <laughs> and send to Samantha. I'm trying to find, I'll bring it up now if I can and we'll, and you can listen. You're teasing the sweetest person in my podcast community. This, everybody is my message to Samantha, Kurt Stone's favorite <laughs> listener. So Mike comes on the phone, Effin and Jeffin, I'm going to go to my room 
up there and get a bar of soap and come up to New York and wash your mouth out. Love you. <laughs> You gotta send that to me so I have the original audio. <laughs> After we record that, Scott goes, I'm having that. I'm like, what? I'm having that effing and jeffing. I'm using that. That's... We were talking Sorry, about Sam. making fun of the people from Paris. We were making fun of the people from Paris. Sam's from New York City. We're, we, we have that. Bless. Because I, I just think it was hilarious <laughs> the way it came over the record. Because she's the sweetest ever in our podcast. Oh, she's, yeah, oh she's gosh, great. That's funny. Of course, you didn't make it to the treehouse, did you? I didn't know. No, I had So the treehouse, the, the sort of kickoff. Having a problem. The sort of kickoff. And that's, that, yeah. I actually had a shirt made. Oh. Oh, what's that say? Something my crazy uncle. I'm that crazy uncle everybody warned you about. I always, Where'd you get that shirt? Yeah, I had that shirt that's made up when I bought it from Tee Public. I like it. And I always yeah. tease Sam and Rebecca that they're my nieces, my Disney nieces. Let me see that picture again. Is that, was it Tony Ann? I was trying to read the... Is that Samantha on the left? It's Samantha. Oh, Rebecca. Rebecca. Yeah. Nice. That's a great picture. Yeah. You got to send that to me. Send that to me. That's a great picture. Yeah. Bless them. They've just been off site for a meal. I just did a, the report on, yeah. on the Disney crush. Yep. I heard about that. Yeah. Bless yeah. her. We love you. We love you, Sam. Even if and we Rebecca. do tease you. <laughs> she does get teased a lot. Oh, she does. I, don't know yeah. I think she can take it all right. I think she's, I think she can handle it. <laughs> we're in a New Yorker. Yeah. And we're, yeah. She's got tough skin. We are in the stages of planning coming to New York the 5th of September next year. We're hoping to fly into New York and spend three I or four it. days there. So I'm hoping oh, we it. can yeah. turn that into a New York meetup. How's about yeah. that? That's a no brainer. Yeah. I'm all about that. And you gotta, there's lots of scenes, a lot of tourist things I've not done in New York, quite honestly, which is amazing. So I would use this opportunity, whatever you want to do. Kevin, like the Statue of oh, Liberty. Yeah, or, Statue of Liberty. Or, and, and, I mean, nine, I want to do the Twin Tower Memorial. Yeah. That's the, that's I want to do that with you. I'm going to save it. York. Yeah, I knew you. I knew I've heard you say that. And I think you want to do a Broadway show too, right? Yeah, we could do a Broadway show. Yeah. Definitely. So I'm, um, let's, well, that's a it we're going to do a geek The West meet. End, obviously, but. The way my daughter speaks, it seems like they test them out in the West mm. End. And if they bomb, they don't come to New York. We've seen some, we've seen some weird stuff on the. Like West End. Yeah. <laughs> that won't play. In, in our in younger York. days, we, we used to go up to London quite regularly and watch shows. And yeah, we've, we've nice. seen some very strange stuff on stage there. Oh my gosh. Kevin, this is always a pleasure. No wonder you've become such a favorite around my podcast, the weird uncle, the weird internet uncle, I guess now we'll call you. Yeah. That could be Instead of the, thing. what did we call you before? Village idiot. Better. I think I made, I read. I rebirthed the village idiot when I didn't book one night this time. Sometimes he's the village idiot. Other times he's the weird uncle. Always a pleasure. You got it. What, what can we finish up with? Well, I'm not sure. What do you want? I think the thing that I find really amazing is just the friendships that come through it. Mm -hmm. And I was so heartbroken at, that AJ couldn't make it this time. Oh, I know. And yeah, we did have some, we had some family members that, had some things going on back home this time for sure that couldn't make it and aj shout out to aj and our our good friend kate who is working through cancer and there's lots of things going on right now to support kate too just let us know if you'd like to help out there but kevin yeah finish up with the personal part of it did you get a chance to see a lot of people yeah we did some time with we actually did moana with dave youngwood and veronica and uh, okay. straight after Space 220, we went in there with Deirdre and Sam. And we managed to spend a little bit yeah. of time with Veronica, who is the nicest person in the world to spend time with. Such a lovely, just a, a lovely, warm human being. Really interesting to yeah. talk to. We, I walked around at Moana and I just thought, yeah, it's nice. But she was pointing out like that in there are fully grown plants. It's not like. Someone's just gone to a nursery somewhere and put in little plants. They're fully grown and established plants that have only been there a handful of months. And it's done so well. Yeah. So really interesting. Just And spending time with Dave and Veronica is always a bonus. Yeah, I'm a big fan too. And they, 
Veronica is going to be on my podcast. I'm recording tonight with some of the leaders that helped put on G3. So I'm excited. We got a hold of her. She's going to be on also. And obviously spending time with my sister wife's fantastic as well, Deirdre. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to be in trouble. She did threaten to divorce me, apparently, if I didn't go to Space 220. Oh, well, that's one. Yeah, they're very, they're good at that. Samantha and Deirdre are good at coming up with great ways to get you over. I'm glad. We did. It, the time seems quick and fast for sure. Even though you were there, doesn't it go by fast? How, how unbelievably three weeks? fast, yeah, unbelievably fast. <laughs> it just, it just seemed to be no time at all, and we were packing to come home. Of course, the last night I ended up buying. Oh, we need to share this. So on the very yeah. last night, I'm in Hollywood Studios, and it's pouring rain. And I've looked at these lightsaber mm-hmm. umbrellas, so I thought. All oh, right, got to buy one. So I buy one. Yeah. That's sixty five dollars for a brand. Oh, wow, that's quite a souvenir. This is what you got. So it's an umbrella, a solid umbrella. It doesn't fold up small. It's a long, sort of like a golf umbrella. You light it, it all lights up. So it's about it's Wednesday evening, and it's about ten to eight. I pay for it. I come out, yeah. and I think, oh, I get a notification that you're on a Zoom call. I think oh, to yeah. myself, I'll tell you what, I'll see if I can join the Zoom call. That was fun. I was having yeah. trouble with my headphones, so I got my old headphones with a lead. I plug it in, and I join the, the, the Zoom call. Now, we stay on that Zoom call. From I walk out of Hollywood Studios. You give me bum directions on where to go to catch the um, monorail back or, or to get the mm. transport back <laughs> to um, Magic Kingdom. Yeah, like a New Yorker. Yeah, I've got on a rock. <laughs> I know we get on the monorail, you're still with me on the Zoom meeting on the monorail. I get off the monorail, I walk in into a yeah. Magic Kingdom, go through security, still on the Zoom call. So I'm on this Zoom call <laughs> yeah. in Magic Kingdom. So I said to this, so I think, I'm going to have my photograph taken in front of the castle on my own. So I, and I said to yeah. so I said, the cast member, the photographer, I said, oh, yeah. I'm on a Zoom call, Let, say hello. So she says, oh, hello, right. Yeah. So we end up having this photograph thing. She does a, a zoom one in where she zooms right in and I've got the, yeah. the phone in my hand and you can see the faces on it and you can see in the background, you can still see the come castle. Out good? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you guys send me that too. I love that. So I stayed that on that zoom yeah. call all the way in Magic Kingdom until my, my phone finally died on me. I think you, you froze up. Oh, that's right. <laughs> the battery died. So yeah, I think that's what we should end the podcast on is me joining the zoom call from Walt Disney World. It's been a pleasure, my friend. Uh, that's it's been a, a pleasure. Oh, my God. Love you, Kevin. And definitely, yes, I'm glad we left some cliffhangers. Get more than food. This was the Kevin Curtis Allen food review for our podcast. Get all the details of his trip from, I don't know, are you going to be on some other podcasts besides Brit's your own? Gu- I don't know. I'll, I'll share it all over on Brit's Guide over the next few months. I don't know whether I'm going to okay. stretch it out or whether I'll maybe do two a month for Brit's Guide once I've done the that nice. florida podcast i see but it'd be all over there it. you got your work invest on looks like you're going to work i gotta i'm working from home now permanently so i'm gonna be i'm gonna take a shower and get ready for work <laughs> yeah i got my iVis on i'm ready to go in and sort the trucks out at work so yeah three days right. of that now i've got um some work to do on my latest love project the cat the camper van so i had some parts nice. come for her yeah. today i like that and i say this to everybody and I, I even mean this to you. Stay in touch, all right, Kevin? <laughs> oh, maybe. I'd like I don't to know. Always... again. I might ghost you. <laughs> That's a new phrase. I've heard ghosting. You know what that means. But... And on that very last night, before I come on that Zoom call, I walked through Epcot and I did meet Matt in, in the Rose and Crown. So we'll leave it on that. Yeah. I did get to meet Matt. Yeah. And I recorded a video, which I think I've posted. Okay. I definitely posted it in the Geeking community yeah uh, i've posted it in, where i send a little message to his mum and then his mum obviously works for me at, here on the isle of white and he used to work with us on the isle of white as well but if you oh okay so you did know him yeah yeah i knew him yeah not very well but deborah knew him better, knew him better yeah. because she worked with him more, more closely cool. so if anybody's in the rose and crown ask for matty and if you're a young single lady looking for love <laughs> an american i'm trying to fix him up We'll leave on that note, Kevin. Thank you, pal, you for uh, Thanks a lot. Sp- spending our Monday morning together. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas.
Always so much fun to talk with my pal, Kevin, who's been with me since kind of the first year, the beginning. Always, always there for me. Thank you, my pal, Kevin. Check out his two podcasts, That Florida Podcast and The Brit's Guide to Disney World. For more of his trip highlights, he'll be, as he said, recording and sharing that out with you guys. Definitely check out his podcast. Hey, let's start Kevin's countdown now till his trip to New York City, September 5th of next year. Who's up for a New York geek meet next year? I know I am. I'm all in. I'd like to set up a tour of New York City for Kevin and me, a Broadway show possibly, and we can see what others might want to do in New York City when Kevin and me are there. Let me know your thoughts. Definitely message me or let's start talking about on our Wednesday Zoom calls. I've never really done a nice historical tour or just a touristy thing, maybe on one of those double-decker buses. I've never even seen the Statue of Liberty. So there's lots I'd love to do in New York. It'd be fun to go with Kevin. Maybe see Hamilton. That would be fun. Shout out and congratulations to all our geeks in the parks for the Wine and Dine Half Marathon last weekend. I'm working on a trip report that I hope will be coming out soon. I'm trying to get that put together. Hey, thanks to everyone for the condolences and prayers from our Geekin family on the passing of my wife, Margita's mom, last Saturday. You guys are amazing. We really thank you for all your support and nice little gift. You guys know who you are who sent that to Margita. She'll be thanking you too privately, but we really appreciate it. Many of you have been through similar situations with parents in nursing homes. Your mom and I have been taking care of that. Margie did an amazing job over the last couple of years. But thanks again for everyone who reached out to Margita and me. Thanks to everyone who's been supporting our friend Kate. Shout out to Heidi and Holly who are cooking meals this weekend for Kate. You guys are amazing friends. And thanks to all our friends who financially are chipping in for food and stay in touch with us. We've got a little chat group that goes on in support for, for Kate and If you'd like to be a part of that, just let us know. We will get you plugged into that. And that's just something awesome about our community. There's so many things, but again, thanks. You know, uh, every podcast I start out with how amazing this group is. They're generous and caring people. And uh, it's one of the things I'm the most pleased about from the podcast. I do want to give one shout out, looking into the private Facebook group, definitely get in there if you'd like to be a part of our community. Tony Ann posted this, it's uh, just words, no pictures. It says, it's okay to support another person who is doing something similar to you. It won't hurt your business. If anything, it will help you both. Competition happens at the bottom. Collaborations happen at the top. And Tony Ann also said, she thought, she saw this. I know she does a lot of reading and I'm not sure where she saw this, but she said it made her think of me. So she thanks. She thanked me for my encouragement and example. And Tony, I wrote back, our friendship is priceless, my friend. So thank you so much for that. And it just reminds me, if you guys are podcasters or you can see something that I'm doing that you'd like to either talk to me about, I, I often will get on a zoom call with someone. If you're, if it's about podcasting or something else, just let me know. I've got plenty of time to share my personal experience and the things that I've been doing. So if you're interested, if you want to collaborate, if you're a podcaster, want to collaborate with me, definitely reach out to me. I love podcasters and I understand you. So reach out to me if you'd like to chat about anything. I'm always available. Just email me, kurt.stone at geekin on www.com. Thank you to everyone who supports the Travel in Tierras. They're available to book trips, and they'd love to talk to you about your next trip to Disney World. I see Mom and Judy always chatting on the phone about you guys, and I thank you so much. Definitely, if you're booking your own trip, just transfer it over to them. They'll get credit for it. They'll help you, too, and we really appreciate all you guys that support our small business. And my Patreon friends... I just donate to the, the podcast through patreon.com. That's a, a website where you can make a pledge to the show. And I try to do every week 
And I've been really consistent recently with my live audio recordings from my G3 trip this past week. I thought it was a really fun one. And my good friend, Andy Hoffman, he'll text me every once in a while. He really enjoyed this week's. I, I thought it might, maybe I'll release one of these out for you guys so you can hear them. I can make one available for you for free and you can check it out. But this one was kind of fun. It's an early morning coffee walk. I think it's, it's like Saturday morning reviewing our Halloween party and some of the things that happened on Friday. But I finished up with a, a practice speech that I ended up doing later that morning in Epcot. And it was really fun for me to listen back to it as I was putting my thoughts together on what I would say to the crowd over at Epcot in front of the big ball and world showcase. And I don't know, I got a little choked up when I was recording it. And also when I was listening back. So if you want to hear that, check out patreon.com. Look for geeking on WDW because you know, we're committed to helping you enjoy your Disney world vacation. Reach out to us. If you'd like to do a trip report, book trips through the traveling tiers or I want to just talk about, get some advice. We'd love to hear from you. We love talking to you guys every single week. Kurt.stone at geekingonww.com. Thanks for going geeking on Walt Disney World with us. We really appreciate you listening and geeking with us every single day. We love you geeks. Have a magical day. And I hope all your dreams come true. My food yeah. report. It's outstanding. <laughs> I can't, wherever I'll be able to remember what I ate at all these places, I don't know. I'm very impressed. That Reuben sandwich, I'd never had a Reuben. I didn't even know what it was. But he says Reuben's like all the time. So I tried that at the bakery. That was quite good. And I only remember it was Reuben yeah, because of Rebecca Reuben. That's the only reason why I can remember. <laughs> it's called less. That's awesome. I did. Just, I was just pasting it in. This is actual fact. I have got one of your shirts on that. Underneath my work uniform. All right. Because it's getting cold here, mate. Thank I'm you. sat up in the in loft and I'm I cold. You. I haven't got warm since I got home. And we had a water leak last night. Same here. It's that's it's wild how the the temperature just took a nosedive. Yeah, we've had a lot of rain here over the last week or so. Yeah, a too. lot of rain. <laughs> we had it okay. in the we had it in the kitchen yesterday. The stop cop broken. The, the stopcock valve, which is the valve you turn off to stop water if you get a flood inside the house, I turn, yeah. it was leaking, but from the feed side. So turning it off didn't stop it. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I was panicking trying to get out of the gas board who, who covered my house, and they wouldn't come out until today, they were telling me. Okay. And I said, well, I've got to stay up all night and keep on emptying buckets and the bowls. Yeah. And then, but I did find that you can turn it off actually outside your, your property. I, I Googled it, and there's a valve actually on the water meter that comes into the house. So I turned it off there. Oh, good. Yeah. Because oh, I, I was having no water. things of, you know. That's the main shut off then. Yeah. I Yeah. Yeah. There's it, In yeah. a lot of houses, it's actually in the street. But in our house, it's in our back garden. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. We could talk forever about that. I'm doing the same thing right now. <laughs>
Yeah, I don't think I'll I'll I go down so, so well with, with the geeking community. Oh, cut my hours of plumbing. <laughs> it's going to be a dudes in progress show. Yeah, they, they had a knock on the door, two blokes outside about seven o'clock at night. Yeah, because there's two men on the front door. And I went, so we went, I, I went out, looked on the camera, and they got plumber tops on with some plumbing company. So I opened them up, and they started yeah. British Gas have sent us. And I said, all right. They came in, and they fixed it in about two minutes because they had the oh, cool. test done. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, dude, good. All right, let's do Disney World. Yeah, let's do. Uh, let's at least get Let me do my them. podcast voice intro. Yeah, okay, okay. Let's see if I can get. <clears throat> Hope you can talk. It is six o'clock in the morning here. Not even. <laughs> it's eleven a.m. Middle of the day for you. Yeah, I've just done yeah. a load of parts delivered for me trap be camper vans. It was like Christmas oh, downstairs. Nice. nice. All right, let's do it. <laughs> 